Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, this roundup for November is a bit more festive than in previous years, which is why I've called it a Christmas favourites part one, because even though things always get a bit festive during this month as we build up towards Christmas, this month has been a bit more so than usual this year for me because I've already had my first Christmas meal, um, courtesy of a freebie, a PR invite, which was very kind. And I've also looked at some of the displays in London, of course, and followed a sculpture trail that has a festive theme to it. So there's been all that going on. And on top of that, I've also seen a couple of theatre shows and enjoyed various bits of TV and music as usual as well. So there's quite a bit to mention this month. As always, there's a lot more detail in the blog post to go with this. Um, so, you know, this is only ever a summary as usual. And none of it is sponsored or gifted apart from the PR invite thing. And that wasn't for me to review. That was for my friend Emily to review, as I mentioned in a second. In any case, all opinions are my own regardless. So, yeah, I'm just going to crack straight on with it, really. And I hope you enjoy it. So, yeah, the freebie I had was with Emily Davison, who I've been working with as a support worker for nearly a year now. And she was invited to Bill's in Greenwich for their Christmas meal. We got to sample their Christmas menu and that was really, really nice. And they're a dog friendly restaurant, so she couldn't just bring a guide dog in, but anybody can bring their dogs in as well. They've even got a dog friendly Christmas menu in there. So yeah, we had a really nice meal in there. I had the chicken and sesame dumplings for starters with some spicy chutney. So a nice little kick to it without being too strong. And I had a couple of slices of garlic bread on the side with it. And um, then for the mains, I went for the notorious PIB burger, the Pigs in Blankets burger, which has got bacon and sage and onion mayo and cranberry sauce and stuff like that with it. It's really, really big and really nice. So that filled me up very nicely. There were some nice rosemary salted fries with it as well. But I did have room for dessert too. You know, how could you not leave room for dessert, especially when it's free? So I had the merry black cherry and dark chocolate eaten mess, which was the only dessert option for their Christmas specials menu, but they do have a more standard Christmas menu with more options on it. And of course, you can still pick from their regular menu as well. But yeah, this eaten mess combined black cherries and kirsch with white chocolate mousse and meringue pieces all topped with dark chocolate shavings and golden crumble. And that was really nice. It was a nice mixture of flavours and textures. So I enjoyed that. And we had a couple of drinks as well. We had a, I had a cider and a cocktail, which was really nice. So yeah, it was a really nice meal. The staff were really friendly and kind and everything, which you do expect for a free I acknowledge that. But, you know, Bills do have a good reputation. I've already had a free birthday meal with them earlier in the year as well, courtesy of my friend Claire. And we're going to a Bills for our Christmas meal get together as well. So that would be nice. They are a lovely uh, restaurant chain. We do like going in there. So yeah, that was a nice way to start off my Christmas. And just prior to that, before we'd had our meal, we'd had a little walk around Greenwich to build up an appetite as well. So while I was waiting for Emily, I had a quick look at the Cutty Sark because that always looks nice. I must go on though and have a proper look around. I haven't done that yet, but yeah, the Cutty Sark and the area around it by the Thames is lovely. Then when she arrived, we had a little look around Greenwich Market and I bought her a present that she wanted. It was a lit up paper carved woodland scene from a place called Paper Wonderland. And she very kindly sent me a hamper in the post afterwards as well for my gift, which I've already devoured. That was very lovely. Well, mum and I shared it between us. There were some lovely chocolate things in there. Chocolate orange fudge was the nicest bit of that. So thank you, Emily, for that. And then after the market, we went to the old Royal Naval College and had a look at the sumptuous, brilliant painted hall in there. It's really, really beautiful, that ceiling with all the artwork on it. So impressive. So thank you to Emily for that lovely day out and for the gift as well. That was very kind. And then by myself, I've also done a couple of other festive things. In particular, I had a look at the Walking with the Snowman trail that's in the Fleet Street quarter of London at the moment until early January. Everyone knows the snowman, of course. It's the classic animation that's on TV every year. It's been going for the past four decades now. And the author, Raymond Briggs, sadly passed away last year. And for the last few years, they've had a sculpture trail in a few locations around the country each year where sculptures of the snowman are decorated in various different ways by lots of talented artists. And it's the same people behind it called Wild in Art who organised the Morph Trail earlier in the year. So the plasticine character Morph was decorated in different ways all over London. So I posted about that in the summer, posted a long post with all the photos in it. And so yeah, I had a look at the Snowman Trail and there are 12 snowmen and they're decorated in the theme of the 12 days of Christmas. So you know, each artist has interpreted each of the days of Christmas in a very different way. You know, whether it's four calling birds that's quite a nice one I liked, or the ladies dancing, or pipers piping, or whatever. They're all very creative. So I've enjoyed looking at those i've posted a blog post all about them and i'm currently posting them on my instagram as well as i film this you know just day by day posting one or two of them each day so yeah really nice to look at those you know it was a bit difficult to find a few of them because the map on the website isn't hugely reliable the actual design of the map is more about looking pretty rather than 100 percent accurate it just gives you a rough idea of where they are but if you look at the road names in the corner of the map then type them into google maps or whatever then that'll guide you more directly to them it doesn't help that there's some roadworks in that area as well you know there's one particular junction that's pretty much all 
shut off. Pedestrians can get around by crossing the openings that have been left for them, but I nearly missed one snowman altogether that way because I thought he was down the street that was listed on the map, but he's actually on the junction at the bottom of that street on the other side. And yeah, I just kind of missed him at first, but I did find him in the end. So yeah, I did find them, although it was well worth looking. They're very, very nice. And then I've also looked at some of the Christmas lights and displays around London, of course. Some of them have stayed the same since last year, and there's no problem with that because it's much cheaper and easier to keep them the same, and there's no reason to change them when they look perfectly nice. But there are some new bits and pieces out there. Covent Garden, for instance, have changed the decorations inside the market for the first time in around a decade, and it does look really impressive. There's some nice big golden bells in there now, and big red baubles and spinning mirror balls and stuff like that. It looks really lovely. And there's a big Christmas tree outside there, big Christmas tree that they always have every year. That's still there. And Carnaby have also gone for a new theme this year because they always change theirs annually. They're one of the kind of the big players in the kind of Christmas display arena, as it were, each year. So this year they've gone for the universe as a theme. So there's planets in the sky and some other bits and pieces. It's a little bit more abstract than some years. It hasn't perhaps quite excited me as much as some previous displays. I did like the Queen display they did as a big fan of them, of course. So it's going to be hard for anything to beat that. And I think some of the other displays have been a bit more interesting but that said it's still very nice and very colourful and well worth a look so yeah Carnaby always looks nice whatever they do and then there's Oxford Street of course I mean how could you not walk down there during the Christmas season you kind of have to have a look at the shops there really if you live in London or come and visit the city they haven't changed their lights above the road they've still got the stars hanging down and Regent Street and Bond Street nearby they haven't changed their lights either but of course all the shops in that area all change their displays every year so it's been nice to walk up and down and have a look around as usual John Lewis this year I haven't been quite so enthralled by their Christmas windows. They've got the Venus flytrap in the window from their rather strange advert this year. Again, it's not been one of their best adverts, I don't think. But, you know, that does look impressive. But the other windows, yeah, there's a nice kind of long table set out for a feast. But otherwise, it's just kind of products and stuff. But that said, going inside the store and going upstairs to their Christmas department, that always looks really nice in there. They've got some lovely trees in there. They're not at all cheap, but there's some lovely trees and other bits and pieces in their Christmas section, which is always nice to look at. M&S have also got some nice Christmas food as well, of course. Mum and I have already started buying bits and pieces from them. But I did much prefer the Christmas windows in Selfridges this year. I mean, they've got loads of windows in their huge building, but they always make the effort to really fill them with something interesting and eye-catching. And this year they've gone for a showtime theme. So you've got like models of singers and angels and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. And there's little bits of audio that play as well, like applause or speech or a bit of singing, whatever. So yeah, it's really nice to just have a little wander down the street and have a look at each of those windows. It's very impressive. And then the other place I wandered into was HMV. And it's lovely to see that back on Oxford Street because it went away some years ago and was replaced by one of those annoying American candy stores that proliferated Oxford Street for some time and a lot of them were money laundering places anyway really so yeah it was a shame they took over a bit but um, yeah it's nice to see HMV back I'm not going to go in there and buy anything because it's much easier for me certainly as a visually impaired person at least to just go online and look at stuff and buy stuff that way but it, you know a lot of people do like buying physical products and there's a lot of vinyl in there that's very popular of course these days as well as CDs and DVDs and books and t-shirts and all sorts so yeah there's a load of stuff in there it's really really nice it's just not somewhere that I need to go to just because it's easier for me to get stuff online but it is great to see a physical high street store like that opening up again and I hope it does well and I also had a little walk along the South Bank this month as well which I always like to do every so often that bit of the Thames is always nice and outside the South Bank Centre they've got their lit up trees that they have every year and I had a nice little toasted cheese sandwich as well from one of the market stalls under the bridge there so that was nice and I have posted a video of some clips from that walk on my channel which you may have noticed already so yeah that was a nice little walk nothing new on there particularly for me to see but it was always nice to go down there so they're moving away from the festive stuff and on to a couple of theatre shows I saw this month and the first one I want to mention is An Evening of Unnecessary Detail which I saw with my friends James and Zoe at the Cambridge Theatre in Seven Dials which is normally where the Matilda musical plays which I have seen before and that's amazing as well and this is a show I've seen a few times before I've mentioned it a few times before this is put on by Festival of the Spoken Nerd and it is quite a nerdy show and they celebrate nerdiness in all its forms and it's basically a selection of people giving humorous lectures and interesting lectures on all sorts of subjects in a level of unnecessary detail they really do go into a lot of detail about various different things it's always a nice variety show that and this was no exception so yeah it was a lot of fun and I have listed all the acts in my blog but just to give a little summary of some of them Matt Parker himself who hosted the show he did have some material of his own including his reinvention of the game Dobble where you have to find a matching symbol on any pair of cards in a set and then Helen Arney sang a few songs one of which was the famous Elements song where you sing all the elements in the periodic table she does it very well and she's even added like the newest elements onto it as well and she also performed a love song with romantic lyrics generated from Google's autofill suggestions which were very amusing and then she's also written a song about the first all-female fire brigade from Girton College which is part of a new project she's working on and she got a group out to perform that for her called Molly O'Gorman and the Firebrand a group specially put together for the night and they performed with a few of the acts throughout the night and then in terms of the other 
Max, we learn various things from different people, including the contrasting roles of females amongst naked mole rats and killer whales, why the sky is blue, some facts around prime numbers, some enlightening properties of Morse code. And there's a Japanese stand-up comedian as well talking about some awkward translations that she's experienced. And then there was also a lady who's captured images of the inside of her body and created a piece of music in the process with the group that I mentioned before. So that was all quite good. And then towards the end of the show, we had Count Binface, who has been a spoof candidate at various elections over the years, and people have voted for him. But yeah, he was very good. A little bit of politics in there, but nothing too heavy. And he did perform a very fun campaign song to the tune of National Express by the Divine Comedy at the end. And then the closing act was Dan Schreiber, who is one of the QI researchers from the No Such Thing as a Fish podcast. And he presented us with 10 of his favourite facts, which was pretty good. So yeah, it was a very entertaining evening altogether. A nice variety of people. If there were one or two acts you weren't interested in, then there would be someone else you did like. So that was very, very good. As I say, I've seen a few of those shows in the past and I will no doubt see more in the future because they are very funny and very interesting. And then the other show I saw was The Choir of Man at the Arts Theatre, which my aunt recommended to me and she went with me to see it because she wanted to see it again anyway and she knew I would like it. And it's a very uplifting, fun show. And it's basically set in a bar and you can go up on stage before the show starts and order drinks from the bar and take it back to your seats. And because it's designed to feel like a pub environment, it's a nice kind of small intimate theatre to host that show in. It started as an Edinburgh Fringe show and it's kind of growing very popular sense. And basically you get a group of men on stage who, supported by a four-piece band on an upper level, perform various well-known songs in their kind of own way and they're very nicely performed. The first song, for instance, is Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses because they've called the pub The Jungle, so it's very appropriate. But we also had songs by Katy Perry and The Proclaimers and Queen and Adele and Red Hot Chili Peppers and John Farnham and various other people. So there's quite a variety of genres and artists in there, which is good. And as I say, they put their own spin on each each song so it was recognizable but also quite fun and you could clap along to things and sing along to them as well if you wanted you know it was a very kind of community feel which was the whole design of it and there's some other impressive talents in there as well like tap dancing and playing various instruments that the guys do and some nice choreography and stuff like that and in between some of the songs the lead member of the band spoke about some of the characters in this pub group telling us about their history and the sort of people they are and he also in general spoke about the virtues of community spaces like this how important they are how beneficial they are to people we have lost a lot of pubs over the years especially thanks to the pandemic as well so yeah to have this kind of show that highlights how important they are is great and they're also supporting a charity called Calm the Campaign Against Living Miserably which is a suicide prevention charity because the statistics of that are quite shocking really you know there's 125 lives that are lost to suicide every week of which 75% are men which is quite thought provoking really when you think about it so yeah it's great that that kind of charity is helping to support people and you know raise awareness of that kind of thing so yeah it's a lovely show for good cause good community feel and everything it's a great afternoon out or a great night out whenever you go and see it so yeah we really enjoyed that it's well worth going to and they do change like their set list a bit every year so if I was to go again next year or year after whatever they would have slightly different songs there I probably won't go there every year but you know it'd be nice to go and see that show again so they're moving on to TV and video stuff and of course there's Doctor Who this month which is celebrating its 60th anniversary I've mentioned that before I'm not going to mention the latest specials or the celebrations for the anniversary though because I'm going to review them at a later date they're still ongoing at the moment and I'm still exploring like the Hooniverse online as well this big collection of shows they put online so yeah I'm going to review all that at a later date but this month I have rewatched and reviewed David Tennant's final specials as the 10th Doctor which are a lovely collection of episodes and there's plenty of extra features in the still book I've got for that as well so you can see that you can go through that if you're so inclined and as I've said before I am aware of the new box set for series one to four and the specials that has come out on Blu-ray and having weighed up the pros and cons of it I've decided not to get it which I kind of suspected anyway I don't need to upgrade for my still books in some way ways it's an upgrade to get that set but in some ways it's a bit of a downgrade as well and it's not really worth me upgrading to it I've been perfectly happy watching the sets that I've got there's nothing for me to seriously gain from buying the new set really but if you're making the leap from DVD then yeah it's probably worthwhile but for this Blu-ray user at least I'm not too bothered it's just not something I feel I need and then in terms of comedy the latest series of Taskmaster has ended this month and as usual that was very good Sam Campbell was a worthy winner as I've said before I'm not really a fan of his kind of comedy characters but here in this series he was kind of quite clever in a lot of the tasks and quite entertaining to watch so he did deserve to win Julian Clary and Sue Perkins were the ones I was most familiar with and they were both very good I did enjoy watching them Suta McComa was the only one I'd never heard of before and she was quite good though she kind of grew on me a little bit I'm not interested in seeing her solo stuff but she was good in this to be fair she was a good sport and Lucy Beaumont was okay I, I never really got into her just like I don't get into her other stuff but you know, she still gave good value nevertheless there were still some funny moments with her and there is a New Year special coming up as well of course I don't know who's in it because I'm deliberately 
deliberately not looking. You know, I try and avoid spoilers for things as far as possible. You know, even like for Doctor Who, for the 60th anniversary specials, I've avoided spoilers as much as possible. We've been very successful at it as well. So yeah, for Taskmaster, I'm going to see if I can be surprised by who's in it when New Year comes around. It'll get harder as it approaches as they promote it, but I usually tend to do quite well. And then online, I have also watched The Dating Show by Nina Conti, and she is a brilliant ventriloquist. She's very, very funny. And in this show, which she hosts with a puppet monkey, she invites people up on stage to talk about the relationships or to talk about the sort of people that they'd want to date. But obviously these people don't talk for themselves because it's a ventriloquism show. One of Nina's great strengths in her act is that she puts special masks on people and talks for them. So she'll ask them questions about themselves and they'll try and act out the answers because they can't talk themselves. But she'll then interpret them and her improvisation in those interpretations is very, very funny. And she spends whole routines out of them and even makes people do little dances occasionally and things. And so, yeah, it's a very funny hour-long show available for free on YouTube. I can recommend it. If you've never seen her before, it's well worth a look. And then finally, just a couple of music bits to mention quickly as well. Madness have a new album out called Theatre of the Absurd Presents C'est La Vie, for which I bought the deluxe digital edition from their online store because it includes six live tracks from their launch gig at Coco in Camden on the 18th of October. And that cost just $4.99, which is a lot cheaper than the standard edition on iTunes, which was $10.99. So it was a bargain and it's a good album. And there's nothing on there to kind of rival their big kind of sing-along hits of previous years, you know, like Our House, House of Fun, Baggy Trousers, that kind of thing. But it's still a solid album. It's still you know, it's a collection of catchy tracks and nice tracks and things. And if I had to pick like my favourites, Hour of Need is the one that's really kind of jumped out at me somehow. I just kind of like the lyrics to it and the instrumentation and the rhythm and stuff. It just really grabs me that track. And But Baby Burglar is good as well, as is C'est La Vie. And even though there's nothing that really jumps out as being a huge hit, it's a good album. It's good fun, as Madness always are. So it's good to see them back. And then the Beatles have released a single track, but then it's a significant one because it's their final song in effect. And it's called Now and Then. It was a demo produced by John Lennon originally, and they tried to do something with it for their anthology project back in the 90s but they just couldn't really get anywhere with it because the quality of the demo recording wasn't very good at all so they just shelved it and just left it in the archives but then when Peter Jackson came along to produce that excellent Get Back documentary about the band he and his team developed this special bit of software using the latest technology machine learning technology that could split away the vocals and split the instruments up as well into their different components and so they gave him John Lennon's demo of Now and Then and they were able to split away his vocals from the piano part very cleanly so there's actually a bit in the making of film that goes with it online that shows you like John Lennon's voice in isolation which sounds really nice and so because of that Paul was then able to add some bass to it and Ringo was able to add some drums and they brought in a string section as well and they were able to bring in some guitar parts that George Harrison had recorded back in the anthology sessions when they had tried to work on it and they put it all together to make this really beautiful ballad it's come out really really nicely so it's been well worth them putting the effort into so it is well worth a listen I did really like it and that is it that is all I have to mention for this month so I hope you enjoyed that and found bits and pieces of interest in there as per usual and as I said earlier there's a lot more detail on the blog post about all these things december's also looking very busy as christmas always does so i've got various meals i've got planned with friends which will be lovely and with some of those friends i'm also seeing a theater show which will be good there's another theater show i'm seeing on my own there's also um, my friends and colleagues from my old life down in devon who i'm also going to go and see for a long weekend so i'm really looking forward to seeing them again i'm also going to be watching various things at home and stuffing my face full of too much food of course as you do so yeah there's lots of things to look forward to it's gonna be a nice month i think so and whatever you've got planned, I hope you have a lovely Christmas as well. And if you're not going to have a nice Christmas for one reason or another, as is the case for many people every year, then I hope you find some way of making it comfortable and bearable at least. You know, there is support out there if you need it. So yeah, that's all I have to say for the moment, really. There will be one or two more blog posts during the month with things that I'm reviewing as I go along. Um, but my next video will be in the new year, of course, with my next favourites. So yeah, I hope you have a lovely Christmas, as I say, and a happy new year to you too. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And yeah, I will see you for another video in the new year. Bye for now. What are you wearing? I'm wearing an Only Fools and Horses Christmas jumper <laughs> with the yellow trotters three wheel van on it as well. I've even got a Christmas hat if you want it. Oh Here you are. God. <laughs> <laughs>